I don't think anyone expected this kind of attack when we left Istanbul. Everyone was so happy, everyone was full of hope. The worst case scenario that people expected was we were uh, gonna be blocked by the Israeli ships and then we had to turn back or to go to Egypt or find another way to deliver the aid. Ne never something like this. How naive were we to still think that Israel wouldn't do anything like this, but they did. When I heard about this Freedom Flotilla, I was so excited and I decided I have to be part of this mission because ever since the war in 2008 and 2009, there was no other way to come into Gaza to deliver the aid to the people of Gaza directly. The feeling we got as soon as uh, we got on the ship was just joy, excitement, hope, like, oh my god, at last all of the donations will be received by the people of Gaza. At long last, the people of Gaza can feel some kind of release. Maybe I can hug them, hug the kids in there. It was just happiness and joy and hope. That's all I felt. Where we didn't speak each other's languages, but we came to understand each other very quickly. Everyone was happy. We had barbecue, we spoke about politics, we shared the food that we had, people were making concerts, they were singing, it felt like a family. No one thought anything bad could have happened on that ship. There were some concerns like, oh Israel is creating this prison just for us, Israel will not let our ship reach Gaza, but then we thought, what can they do? I mean, what, what can they do? I mean, we're not, we're not violating any law. We're going straight into Gaza. We're not going to touch Israeli waters. All we do is just deliver aid for a few days and go home. This shouldn't be a big deal for anyone. That's what we thought. Uh, we're on our way. It's uh, late afternoon on Sunday, May the 30th. Uh, and we're just enjoying the weather right now. Everybody's spirits are pretty high and everything. And and enjoying the, the kufta and the kebab and all that good stuff. <laughs> we have about six ships now with us uh, all together, including this ship. Three cargo ships and uh, three passenger ships. We traveled from Istanbul to Antalya, where the boat departed from. We left Antalya port on the 27th of May, and then the attack happened on the 31st of May, when everyone was making their fighter prayer together. And then I saw lights surrounding the ships behind us. And then I said, yeah, are those our friends in the flotilla? All of a sudden, the committee was asking us to put our life jacket on. And then I was like, oh no, we're in trouble. I think something big is going to happen. Oh no, they're gonna block us. And then I started to hear the sound of zodiacs approaching us. And then I, I saw, I saw the zodiacs. There were dozens of them. I started to hear the Israeli officers talking through their microphone. And then I started to hear gunshots and then explosions. I didn't really know what was happening. I could see helicopters and then I just decided, oh my god, if I'm gonna die now, I better pray. And, and then I prayed as fast as I could. It was the quickest prayer. But then I started to see blood. <laughs> Um, I just didn't understand what's this blood, this brother who is not moving. Ah, uh, and then. All of us, all of us realized what happened when we saw pieces of brain. I've never met him, never talked to him. I wish I did. He was a cameraman. People said he was a, he was very good at what he's doing. I wish I could have at least talked to him before that. There were many people uh, who saw that. At that time, I. I don't remember feeling anything, really. 
I, I just kept thinking, what do I do now? What do I do now? We got to carry all the martyrs, put them in a place, cover them, and then we could still treat the wounded on the beds of the ship. We didn't abandon anyone. After the attack, we went into our seats and then just wait and watch the Israeli soldiers came on board. The Israeli soldiers start to handcuff all of us. The ship was taken to Ashdod. We were all taken into Beersheba prison, asked questions, and then sent to different prisons between the women and the men. It was prepared for us. I started to feel, actually when we entered the prison, I, I started to ask myself, what just happened? You know, was all alone, the martyrs, the wounded, and I started to feel very sad. Imagine you, what, what's gonna happen to the Palestinians if this is what's happening to us. What we did was we collect aid from so many different countries to hunt the people of Gaza to help them when there was no other way if that's called a terrorist, then Israel must have their own interpretation. And I don't understand that interpretation. Ah, when I went back home, at first I felt like, oh, we haven't accomplished our mission because we didn't reach Gaza. But after Mavi Marwa, the Rafa border was open and helped could eventually come into Gaza. And the people of Gaza, when I talked to them, they said, yes, you, you didn't come to Gaza, but that time we really didn't feel alone. We really felt that, oh my God, there's people who care about us. And people even sacrifice their own lives to save ours. And I found that very beautiful. So I think, despite everything, I believe Mavi Marwa 2010 was a successful mission. Despite all the trauma, if I can, if I can describe the flotilla in one picture, it'll be like the darkest day with a rainbow on it. I would join the flotilla again, definitely. Once again, people are gathering for the same mission from so many different places, so many different languages, different religions, different beliefs, different ideologies, but we have one thing in common. Which is to help other human lives. That's amazing. It reminded me so much of Mavi Marwa 2010, but in a magnified way, because the participants are a lot more than it was in 2010, and the help is a lot more. Okay, we're so different, but we're basically the same, right? Well, we just, we're just people who love life, who want to love each other, who want to help, and who can't stand seeing other people suffer. That's what we are. And inshallah, the effect will be more than in 2010. So, we will not stop. Even this, this ship, reaches Gaza, we will not stop. We will only stop when Palestine is free.